This is the gold standard plan for everyone with PCOS who wants to get pregnant. But we know that it it's not the gold standard. It doesn't work for everyone because if it did, you and I would not be having this conversation. You would be pregnant by now. Everyone who wanted to get pregnant by now would be pregnant and there would not be fertility struggles. Welcome to the PCOS Fertility Health Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Angela Potter, an integrative PCOS fertility doctor who is helping women across the country like yourself with PCOS struggling to get pregnant, and I help them optimize their fertility so they have the best chance at getting pregnant with PCOS. And I am so excited to have you on the show today because we are talking about a very common PCOS fertility plan that so many women are on and are getting stuck. And I care about you, and I care about you having the family of your dreams. And so that's why I want to talk about this type of fertility plan to help you understand what the big problems are with this type of fertility plan. How to identify if it's going on in your fertility plan right now, and then what to do about it. Today, we are going to dive into that. But before we do that, have you join me over on Instagram because the party is over on Instagram. I share misconceptions, steps to optimize fertility, updates about this podcast, and so much more. So join me over there at Dr. Angela Potter. And if you are loving this podcast, please head on over to Apple Podcasts and give me a positive review because that helps other women who are struggling with PCOS and fertility to be able to get access to this key information. I just want to say that I think it is so cool that you are showing up here with me today. You are choosing to flood your mind with fertility information on how to best support your body with PCOS and optimizing your fertility. And I think that is so cool. And I want to acknowledge you for taking this time to get this fertility information for your health and for your future family. So let's talk about So we're talking about a fertility plan that I hear countless times from women in my practice, women who are sharing their stories with me in other areas, and I liken it to a conveyor belt. So I'm going to call it the conveyor belt of fertility care. So let's first talk about the conveyor belt, and then let's talk about how the fertility plan fits into the conveyor belt. So a conveyor belt, imagine a car being built, and it's on that That conveyor belt moving forward piece by piece is being added on in order so the car can be a fully developed functioning car at the end. And this is a pre-programmed system. Every time the steering wheel is added, the very next step, the windshield is added. Now, I don't know the actual steps, but, you know, the steps are predetermined and there is no wiggle room. There is no changing once that car is on that conveyor belt. It is on that one path track forward and there's no changing it. There's no making new decisions as the car is being moved forward. So that's a conveyor belt. Now, imagine a fertility plan where going into the doctor step by step has already been predetermined before you even showed up because when you go in to see your doctor they already you know based on your symptoms and then once they diagnosed you with PCOS you're on that PCOS fertility algorithm and step by step you're going through the process without this bigger look at your health and what's going on in your body So in order to further understand this, let's talk about someone specifically. Now, this is not a real person. We're going to call her Sally, but she just has a story that's very similar to what I hear from women with PCOS and is going to help you understand how these two connect. So Sally was on birth control pills. She got off of those and it took six months for her period to come back. And then her period was all over the place. And her and her husband were trying to get pregnant. It wasn't working. So they went in, talked with their doctor. They got a couple of lab tests done. They were recommended fertility medications. They went through three rounds of timed intercourse with letrozole. And then they were recommended an IUI and another IUI. 
None of that worked. And so then they were told that their only option is IVF. And they were told that their labs were all fine. And so there really was no other option at all except for moving forward to IVF. And so do you see how that's very similar to that conveyor belt where once you are on that PCOS fertility treatment algorithm, there's no wiggle room, okay? They got a couple of lab tests done, but they were told that everything was fine. Then they were moved forward to the fertility medications. The letrozole is the number one PCOS fertility medication recommended currently. And doctors recommend up to five rounds of letrozole. Sometimes Clomid is used as well. But five rounds of those, if those don't, don't work, then IVF is recommended. And so that is that conveyor belt of fertility care. And what's happening is that we're seeing that it doesn't work. For many women, for many families, it does work. And that's amazing. But what I am seeing in my practice and for you showing up here, trying to look for more answers, we know that it doesn't work for everybody. And so that's why I am here to share this information with you, to help you figure out if this is going on in your fertility plan and then what to do about it. Here's problem number one with this conveyor belt of fertility care. It's that it's fitting you into a box. It's a one size fits all approach. And we already know that that doesn't work for PCOS because PCOS is a syndrome. It is made up of multiple different symptoms that create this syndrome. And by definition there, you can't fit that into a box because the, the symptoms that are making up your PCOS are different from your friend's PCOS and your neighbors and all these other women out there who have PCOS. So if PCOS innately is different for different people, how can we expect that a one size fits all approach is going to work for everybody? We shouldn't. And these fertility medications Yes, again, they are super helpful. I am not anti-medications. I am pro, let's use those medications after optimizing these other parts of fertility health. Because these fertility medications were not designed specifically for PCOS. It's not like we did a ton of research about PCOS and then developed these medications specifically for PCOS. No, we are just filling in some gaps here to see if this works. And what we're finding is that it's not working for everyone. And that's because there's some big missing holes in the fertility plan. Which brings me to problem number two, which is this conveyor belt of fertility care does not look at all these other systems in the body that could be contributing to your fertility struggles. So fertility is not just about your lady parts, okay? It's not just about reproductive hormones, not just about ovaries and the uterus. There are all these other systems in the body because your body is this fluid system. Everything is talking to everything else. And you have to be able to put together those kinds of pieces to understand, okay, well, what other, you know, what role is thyroid playing in all of this? What role is cortisol, your stress hormone playing in all of this? What nutrient deficiencies are there that are then impacting your reproductive hormones or creating a cascade in the body that's lowering implantation rates, that's contributing to poor egg quality, that's contributing to your reproductive hormone imbalance. And so if we stay hyper-focused on the ovaries and getting that egg to be released from the ovary, that's missing all these other issues that are coming from the body. Because, you know, with these ovulation induction medications, their main job is to get that egg to ovulate from the ovary. But if you are pushing that egg out of the ovary and you still have elevated testosterone, elevated blood sugar, or elevated insulin, and your thyroid is out of balance, and you have Hashimoto's, you have positive thyroid antibodies, that egg already has poor quality. So even if it got pushed out of the ovary, it doesn't have the right building blocks to create a baby. And so do you see how 
taking those steps to identify what's going on in your body, optimize these other issues that are going on that are contributing to your fertility struggles. Do you see how then that sets the stage for such a much more positive fertility picture in the future than just jumping straight forward to those medications? Because here's problem number three with this conveyor belt of fertility care. It's that in the medical world, it's viewed as the one thing that works. This is the gold standard plan for everyone with PCOS who wants to get pregnant. But we know that it it's not the gold standard. It doesn't work for everyone because if it did, you and I would not be having this conversation. You would be pregnant by now. Everyone who wanted to get pregnant by now would be pregnant and there would not be fertility struggles. Our current medical system responds really well within the model of we have a symptom and we have a medication that can improve that symptom or that disease process. Again, PCOS is a syndrome, so it's made up of multiple different symptoms that create the PCOS syndrome. We don't know that one enzyme system that is creating the entire PCOS picture, so we can't assume that just one medication is going to fix everything that's going on with PCOS. And yet, we, the medical system has created this PCOS treatment algorithm, which is what I've been describing to you as this conveyor belt of fertility care because it's those rounds of letrozole and then moving forward to IVF. But letrozole and even Clomid are not treating all of the different issues that are showing up with PCOS. Those medications do not bring insulin levels down. They do not regulate thyroid hormones. They do not optimize nutrient status. They do not increase antioxidant status to support egg quality. Yes, they play a vital role for many families and their future family and, and bringing babies into this world, but they do not treat this myriad of issues that are showing up with PCOS. And again, you are here because you have been on this conveyor belt of fertility care. And you're thinking, if I've been told that my labs are fine and I'm still not pregnant yet, shouldn't two plus two equal four? Like what else is there? And that's exactly right. That's that first question to ask yourself to say, am I on this conveyor belt of fertility care? Yes. And is there something else out there? Yes. Many doctors who are treating PCOS and fertility struggles are really staying on that conveyor belt of fertility care, going step by step through that treatment algorithm, which is missing a big part of the picture. It's missing different hormones that are contributing to fertility struggles. It's missing nutrient deficiencies. It's missing egg quality. And you want to get pregnant. And so you don't want those kinds of things missed out. Because when you get forward to that conversation of IVF, that feels like the last chance. And you want to step into that with the most abundant, optimal fertility health that you can. So how do you identify that you are on the conveyor belt of fertility care? Number one is if you've been told, well, your labs look fine and we can't do anything else for you because your labs are fine. Because PCOS is a syndrome and by the diagnosis of PCOS, something needs to show up on your lab work to show that you have the PCOS diagnosis. So if you have a doctor who is telling you that your labs are fine, but you have PCOS, either they are not interpreting your labs correctly, or they don't understand the, the diagnosis of PCOS, or the, the right comprehensive labs haven't been looked at yet for you and your specific specific picture. And the second way to know is because you can reflect on your current fertility plan. Is the doctor that you're working with, is their only recommendation trying yet another round with the same medications? And have you been told, well, we can try one, maybe two more times, but then your next step is going to be IVF. 
And are they recommending that without also looking at this more holistic part of your health to talk about nutrients, to talk about how to nourish your body with foods that create this fertile abundance? Are they looking comprehensively at gut health, at toxin load, at comprehensive thyroid hormones to understand what is keeping you from getting pregnant? And are they creating this treatment plan for you that opens up this lush, fertile environment in your body. If you're only getting recommended medication after medication without having a conversation about these other key elements of your fertility, that's a big red flag that you're on this conveyor belt of fertility care. And number three is if you are not getting an individualized plan. If your doctor is not really taking into consideration your medical history and these other issues that are happening in your body to understand how they're connected with fertility, if they're just brushing those aside and saying, well, you know, we just can only try one more round of letrozole and yet you still have headaches, you have bloating, you have stomach cramps, you are really fatigued and get irritable every time before your period. Like those are all really mild symptoms that are actually showing that there's other issues going on that like gut health and low progesterone that are contributing to your fertility struggles. So is your doctor taking that holistic, individualized view of your picture? If you feel like you're in a baby-making factory and you just, okay, next round of medications, that's a big red flag that you're on that conveyor belt and you're, you have these missing links. So what do you do about it? Well, number one, you have to look for a PCOS specialist like myself, a doctor who is well-versed, well-researched into what PCOS is, the different symptoms that create the PCOS diagnosis, how to move forward with a plan that addresses what's coming up with PCOS, and who understands the different systems in the body that then exacerbate PCOS symptoms that contribute to fertility issues. They're able to put together these PCOS pieces because they are a PCOS expert. So that's the first thing to look for. The second thing to look for is an individualized plan. Because again, PCOS is that syndrome. It's made up of different symptoms and it does not fit into a one size fits all, let's put you into a box approach. And you need an individualized plan because an individualized fertility plan is the most effective plan forward to optimal fertility. That's when you get a plan that addresses specifically what is showing up in your body that's keeping you from getting pregnant. It looks at your specific nutrient deficiencies, what hormones are out of balance, unregulated in your body, and let's get you on a plan that brings those back into harmony. It looks at different parts of your medical history and what's going on in your health right now. What kind of lifestyle factors need to be changed? What what is you and what has been keeping you from getting pregnant? Do you see how that opens up such a stronger chance of getting pregnant when you first figure out what's happening in your specific body and get a plan to address that? That's why an individualized plan is key with PCOS and getting pregnant. And third, you want to work with a doctor who does not throw out dismissive fertility advice like, oh, just go lose 150 pounds and everything will open up for you. You want a doctor who looks past the weight picture, who understands that PCOS is so much more than just weight. It's more about hormones and egg quality and nutrient deficiencies and is able to see you as a human being and is able to create a fertility plan to help bring your body into this fertile abundance. If you are stuck, if you have been on this conveyor belt of fertility care, you've been trying to get pregnant for the past six years, and you've been told that your labs are fine. You've been told that, okay, we can just try these fertility medications, and if those don't work, IVF is your only answer. 
If you're in that place and yet you're thinking, that just doesn't sit right with me, there has got to be other answers. Aren't there other ways to figure out what's going on that's keeping me from getting pregnant? If you want those other answers, then your first step is to reach out and book a free PCOS fertility breakthrough session with me because I am a PCOS fertility expert and I can help figure out what missing links are there for your fertility journey and tell you the single most important next step you can take in order to optimize your fertility. And honestly, you want to get started with that today. So jump on over to drangelapotter.com forward slash PCOS, because fertility is one of those things that you do not want to wait on. The longer you wait, the harder it is to turn around. Now, yes, you've been trying to get pregnant for the last six years, but you haven't had the right toolkit yet to help optimize your fertility. And that is in your future. But take the step today. Sign up at drangelapotter.com forward slash PCOS. And as we wrap up here today, I want to remind you that this is podcast is for informational purposes only. And the only way to get specific information about your fertility needs is to sign up for one of those free PCOS fertility breakthrough sessions. And if nobody else has told you this today, I want to be the one to tell you that I believe in you and I believe in your ability to optimize your fertility with PCOS. I'll see you right back here next week.